Welcome, Tiff the Walls, talking Buffalo. Don, how you doing? Doing well yourself, Josh. I'm doing great. <clears throat> uh, we got a uh, little good idea here that we're going to uh, give a try. We uh, had a lot of uh, positive feedback and a lot of success with our uh, Marv to McDermott and Poli into Bean series. Yeah. So we decided to jump down the rabbit hole that is the Bills quarterbacks, starting with Jim Kelly and ending uh, when your time ended with the Bills with uh, Josh Allen. Yeah. So I've identified. Uh, I, I, I it think. Is, I think the quarterback position is important. No, Josh. thank you. And that's why you were the director of football there, administration. There's my hot take for right 15 there. years. Amazing, yeah. amazing take. I've identified 18 <laughs> quarterbacks that started a game for the Bills that you were in the building for as an employee in various roles in your storied career. This is uh this is a list I'll I'll admit, you know, I, I if you would have not put this list in front of me and just said all the quarterbacks from Kelly to, to Allen go. There, there's names I, I would have missed. One is a trick, sure, but there's others that legitimately started games because of injuries or otherwise that I, I would have forgotten. But but now that I see the names, I have some recollection okay. or, of them. So, so instead of know. doing some hot take, you know, uh, ranking or whatever, basically we're just going to talk our way through this. Uh, I've met personally and, and was on the field with three of these guys. Uh, Don, obviously, has met them all, has some stories, anecdotes about you know the way they played, how they were in the locker room, how they were in the building. I thought it would just be kind of a fun behind-the-scenes journey through uh, 30 years of Hall of Fame-level quarterbacking and not-so-Hall-of-Fame-level quarterbacking. Oh, that's a, quite a range here. All right, yeah. so we're going we're gonna to start at the beginning. And uh, can you tell me the first time you met Jim Kelly? Um. It was at training camp in Fredonia. Um, I was an intern, and this uh, would be nineteen eighty. This is eighty eight. Okay, yeah, I didn't really. I didn't hire till till uh, ninety uh, part time. Or eighty nine was part time, but um, so twenty seven years in it. But yeah, Jim Kelly was. Uh, I I was. I had gone to two games while I was in college, and I remember when you know Kelly came here and. It was a huge deal. I was still a Pittsburgh Steelers fan from growing up, but I was living in Western New York. And I had this kind of, you know, other fanship for the Bills when they weren't playing each other. Um, and, uh, yeah, Kelly was the the most, I guess, famous player on a team that already had a lot of stars. And, uh, yeah, I remember just um, – you know, him. I was eating lunch there, and Fredonia would go down. And were you starstruck? Um, at at first, I was. I just. I couldn't believe. Yeah, you know, Bennett and Reed and Thomas was a rookie. Uh, to us, Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith was. Yeah, he he would get. There were huge crowds waiting for when they came out. And Did this you was, ever go to Seaford on training yeah, camp? Uh, yeah, we were I worked there. That's where for you, two years. That's where we you were there. still. You weren't right. St. John Fisher, right? Okay, right, right. So so. Jim Kelly was – obviously, they hadn't made the playoffs yet. 88 was the breakout season. Yeah. Coinciding with your arrival. Uh, well, so, yeah. so give me give me some impressions of, of Jim, you know, early days. Uh, yeah. You know, what, what stood out to you, you know, before the Super Bowl years? Um, he was clearly the leader uh, in the locker room. Uh, he, he respected Marv so much, deference to him, but he, he owned that locker room, really, and uh, – it was uh, he. He. I remember there was a, a guy in our office, Dave Eichinger, that was was pretty good friends with Jim, and uh, he had been there a few years. And he would go to his parties after. Uh, home, did you ever home attend? Games. Did you ever attend a Jim Kelly home party? Uh, not a not a party. I was there for some other kind of. Were you ever thing. invited? Um, I I was invited by by Dave. Okay. But I didn't. I didn't feel comfortable. Sure. I just. He's like. I don't was know. most of he the time didn't... like was it was it clear was, was there a clear delineation like front office guys didn't go but players no went? no okay. they were yeah I mean, Woody was I, they were all there okay. I just I just didn't yeah Dave invited me but until I heard it from Jim himself and I I, I didn't uh, okay I got to know him a little bit oddly enough <laughs> long story I don't even think I ever told you this but he kind of knew my sister a little bit because my sister was Miss Teen New York. Uh oh. And yeah. Uh oh. No, no nothing. It was, uh oh. Wasn't like that. That's Don't a, worry. That's a. Uh oh. They 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 were in Epcot and Disney World. She was representing. You did tell me this. Disney, yeah. They did the parade or something. He, he wasn't with the Bills yet. Oh. Okay. He, he was with the Houston Gamblers. Okay. And deciding whether or not he was going to come to Buffalo. When he told her, they were just they met at some 
you know event where they were, it was meet and greet kind of thing. Okay. And he's like, I, I don't know, I Buffalo. He's telling, I just, I just don't know. Your sister won Miss Teen New York. She did Miss Teen New York. Were you okay? Yeah. Were you at the pageant? No, I was. I had high school basketball games, so I thought, I thought the whole thing. I couldn't believe it, and uh, <laughs> well, she, especially it's your sister. Like, how, yeah, could, how could I mean, she win? Okay, yeah, we were from a small town, and it, she was just going to my my grandfather. Or other family members encouraged her to try it because. You know, it would a lot of it'd be interesting to be around a situation like that and kind of learn some. You were never things. in the running for Mister New York <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. No, okay, no, no. So I went to some events afterwards. It was they were a big deal, but it was just funny. But he was real, yeah, a real nice story. He actually, called our house a couple times, and um, you, so you, but you never got the invite to the party. I didn't. I never. When I got there, I I didn't tell Jim for a while, like. Hey, by the way, I, this, I didn't. I never sure. made that connection. Okay. I just didn't. I, 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 I. That's not you. No, I, I. Were they as were they as legendary and as wild from secondhand knowledge as it's as the legend is? Um, the guy in the office, Dave, used to used to say that these were these were major parties. Well, then they were they after were, home games, after typically, home, right? After home games. Like after win or lose. Yeah, but I mean. I mean, there was year, there were years we'd go eight no at home, like sure. seven to one. Yeah, they didn't. I lose. don't. I don't know if they. Oh, we didn't lose. We're can't. We lost. We canceled. <laughs> Losses were just so rare. Right at know, home, especially at home. Yeah. Wow. It, it would have been nice to bend to one. Looking back at it, just maybe one. I, yeah, I was there for another thing, but it wasn't one of those parties. And I don't know. I just. Uh, I, I. I figured. Oh, let, I, you know. I get it. No, that's not. That's know. not you. So let's uh, let's go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum and talk yeah. about Frank Reich. Yeah, a funny story about Jim Kelly. Though I, I was working on a basketball camp, and uh, Jason Kidd was there, and I told Jim I was going to be up there, and he's like, "Oh, Jason Kidd." He goes, "Here's here's a jersey. Give it to him, but make sure you get a jersey." I'm like, "I I'm not going to even meet him." I'm not going to have any contact. He gave with you him. a jersey to to swap with yeah, Jason Kidd. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and. Uh, so I'm like, I'll try Jim, but I, I don't know that Jason Kidd's going to come up there. He was just a rookie with the Mavericks, that, and he's going to come up with a bunch of jerseys. I, sure. You know, I, I don't sure. know. I have no way of contacting him. I'm not going to meet him until I get there. Sure enough, though, he he did have some because his agent was there or something. And so I told Jason, oh, that sounds good. Jim Kelly, cool. Yeah, here, you know, here's a jersey. And he, he all he did was, like, write his name and – either good luck or best wishes or something and so i came back and i told him hey i got that jason kidd jersey for you cool cool what did he say i'm like i don't i don't know it's good luck he's what what do you mean like he thought oh he thought he, he, thought he was gonna it. write something which i get sure it, right because jim kelly was a bigger deal at the time than jason kidd yeah jim jason kidd ended up being an nba rookie of the year co-nba right. rookie of the year with grant hill but this was but, the um, 90s yeah and jim was you know on the super bowls and, and jason kidd was all oh, cool but um, I like I was supposed to have him write something. I was supposed to think of something clever for him to write. I don't know. That's why you never oh, got. Come that's, on. that's why you never got invited to the party, right there. We, 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 <laughs> Maybe we've, yeah. solved, we've solved yeah, uh, we've solved that riddle. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go to the opposite end of the spectrum. And uh, obviously, everybody knows uh, Jim's backup, longtime backup, and I know you're a friend. Yeah, Frank Reich. Yeah, no, Frank is uh, every bit as, as salt of the earth as um, you know. You 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 attended that. Uh, Call the Courage Breakfast uh, with me. You saw, you know, what he's all about. And that, that's always been him. He's, um, you know, rock solid, a man of faith. He, he I, I think I think he went to Jim's parties, but it's hard for me to imagine him <laughs> doing anything other than having a cup of coffee and yeah. playing. I, I just, you know what I mean? So um, that, that's a, that, yeah, that's but, like a parent being at like a, a parent, party. right? <laughs> but they were, they were really, really close friends. And you could see Do it. Do you think because they were so opposite, that's what made them both close personal friends, and then also the dynamic worked. I I think Jim even said as much that man he that that Frank was like I don't want to put words in his mouth, but something to the effect that he was like his steady rudder, a guy that that he you know leaned on to talk to about things on and off the field. I guess you know they were they were fantastic in in the room in the uh, planning rooms together. The it you know might what I mean? be, but I. I it might be the best starter backup pairing in NFL history. Well, there's there's a good there's a good program. I, I don't know yeah. how you would I don't know how you would delineate that because Frank yeah. never had. I'm not talking like Joe Montana and Steve Young is clearly the most talented quarterback room of all time. 
I, w- I would argue. Sure. Just off the top of my head. Two Hall of Famers. Sure. I mean, yeah. Joe Montana, Steve Young, of course, yeah. both win Super Bowl, both Hall of Famers. Yep. But I'm saying not not necessarily from a talent standpoint, but right. just an overall compatibility, compatibility pairing, yep. success. Well, just look at the records. And long yeah. term. I mean, how, yeah. how many years were they together? And there was never a – I know there was some buzz over time that Frank – Nine or be ten. The, be the starter, uh, but that never came from Frank, and Frank never made a peep about wanting to be the starter here. Did he? I never did. There was if if you press me, which you don't have to, I'll press myself. I will tell you, there's one game that I wrestled with the where, Miami 1992 AFC Championship. Exactly. Game. Yeah, and 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 Marv made the call, and he made the right call. Not that Frank wouldn't have done the same thing, but I was like, well, yeah, he had, he, had, he, had, he, had, he had won the comeback game, yep. and then they went to Pittsburgh. Yep. He didn't play great in that game. There was a famous dropped pick six that oh, yeah. would have flipped the game. Yeah, but he played. I, they they won. Right. He played well enough for them to win. He was. They were in control of the game the whole game. I remember that very vividly. It's what like did you think? Jim's back. I kind of wanted Frank to play. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I. How do you take out the hot hand? He had just. He had just had the most amazing game in NFL history two weeks earlier. Yeah, and and if you know, and they kind of stumbled to the end in the '92 season. You know they lost the game. You know, they lost that Houston game where Jim got hurt, and it they weren't. It looked bad when he yeah. got hurt. It got he looked bad when he got hurt in that Houston game. Um, Do you remember? Was there a buzz around the building? There, we were all like, "Marv, we trust you." To Jim, like we here's the thing: you just knew what a competitor Jim was, and how influential he was, and if he was trying to make the case that look, I'm better for us at myself at seventy five percent. Then, as much as he knew what Frank sure. had done, but I know I can, and he did. I mean, I I, I remember a lot of a lot of screen passes to yep. Thurman, yep, yep. and Kenny Davis that were crushing. Yep, we talked to, to John Davis about that's that. right, and he kept yeah. they were they were literally calling screen put, uh, pass right, yep, screen pass left, a reverse to Brad Lamb. Do you, that's right. <laughs> do you think? Um, do you think Frank? Did you ever talk to Frank about that decision? That that had to be hard. I mean, he was on top of the world it, going into the AFC Championship game, and then. I, I did. I never talked to him personally about it, but uh, it would it would be interesting to to hear a real what a real good comparison. It. It's not apples to apples, but it's close. Is when Drew Bledsoe got hurt for the Patriots. Tom Brady played the whole season. Ooh, that's a really good one. And then he came. He was ready to play for the AFC Championship game against the Steelers. Yeah, and Belichick kept Brady in. And yeah. if you remember, Brady got hurt for a little bit in that game. Bledsoe came, came in, in, threw a touchdown pass, right. who went back to Brady, and then he played Brady in the Super Bowl as a rookie against the greatest show on turf Rams. That is a really good uh, parallel. So kind of that. the difference there. And I don't know if but Frank – a rookie, an unproven rookie, Frank had proven himself. Correct. Not not just in 92, but in 90 yes. when he came in against the Giants and then beat the Dolphins in what we have talked about – might be the biggest regular season yeah. game uh, they've ever played. Yeah, he had a time. track record. Yeah, that's a tough call. I mean, that that would be the, probably the one thing I'd want to ask Marv about. That might have been the toughest call of his career. Is yeah, starting that game. I think maybe also going forward on fourth down in the comeback game. That's another good one. Woo! Those two. Are, <laughs> any anything yeah. else you could share? Both about were right about Marv. Oh, uh, Frank. Just um, I was I was happy. I was never I was never happy to see a player go or. Mostly not ever. I, there, not, were, there were times not later never, on. Not, not, not never. Not okay. Not on those Super Bowl teams. Sure. I can't recall a time where oh, I'm glad he's out of here. There are other players later on here. Some running that, backs, for instance. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> but when when Frank when Bill Polian took over and they they started the Carolina Panthers and they they took uh, Frank Reich, Frank Reich and Pete Metz Lars and Don Beebe and maybe Carlton Bailey. No, he went to the Giants. Might have been another one or two. But I'm like I. I'm glad they're in the NFC. They're they're not likely to be very good soon, but they they were. Yeah, like they they I don't that second year they made, and I I think I don't know who was still if if Pete or but I was glad that they were going to get Frank got a shot. They got a shot to be the guy, and uh, yeah, I, I thought that was good. So you still are in contact with Frank from time to time. I know um, that we you know we saw him at that breakfast. Yeah, and. Well, his success is as a coach has been great. Hey, yeah, glad to see him land on his feet. You felt like you got a raw deal in Indy. Yeah, I oh, I definitely did. He, I think he got. Yeah, my my contact is really secondhand. It's really, I mean, Fred Rains, my friend, uh, keeps in contact with him a lot. So I hear most of it secondhand. But uh, we're all glad that he's in Carolina as head coach. All right, we will uh, we'll move on and we will move on to Todd Collins. 
who you were was, there here. I, so. I remember Todd Collins. I remember <laughs> eating breakfast with Todd Collins yeah. in the cafeteria as an intern, and he never said a word. And not just to word. me, not just to me, not just to me because I was an intern, but I was sitting at his table, and there were two or three other people there, and I couldn't tell you who these people were. But he never said a word. Yeah, I, I, I that's the impression I got of him too. I, I, uh, I had a, maybe a couple conversations with him, but I was struck by, okay, here comes a second round pick, right? Yep, from right. Michigan. From Michigan, and we're used to Jim Kelly, you know, the bravado, and even Frank Reich carried himself with a with a quiet confidence and he would talk to people and Todd Collins you're right he, he was he was oddly quiet yes yeah like like yeah like weird is is, is strong but yeah. just like oh you're the starting quarterback for an NFL team and you came you didn't come from some small school right you came from Michigan and you compare him it's it's hard not to compare him a couple years later to a seventh round pick from Michigan who played for the Patriots and then oh. became the greatest of all time <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and like the, the personality differences between a Todd Collins and a Tom Brady are undeniable right like Todd Collins wouldn't have or Tom Brady wouldn't have sat at that table stone cold silent I wouldn't think for so for 20 minutes I, I just wouldn't think so no no it's hot right where people Moving on from Jim Kelly was obviously it was time. You know, Jim retired. It wasn't like he yeah. was forced out. It was after that that horrible Jacksonville playoff mm -hmm. loss. You knew it was going to be Todd's time. Yeah. And you know, even Marv Levy stayed around for another year. It came. It became pretty obvious pretty quickly though that he wasn't the guy. Right. Yeah. That, that that's a tough. That Jim last Jim Kelly game. We talked to Jeff Burris on the program, and he thought he made the game winning. Yeah. Play. Six. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, but uh, yeah, I, don't, I think Jim. You know, people remember he'd been with the Bills 10 years, but he'd been with uh, in the USFL for a few before. He's taken his share of hits, and uh, we no one doubted. I think he, he Jim said, he admitted like the next year, maybe that he thought, oh, man, maybe I did I retire too early. But um, yeah, with Todd with, came in in the 96 season and he had that win against Dallas. Yeah. Uh, that was the, the game that Kurt Schultz had the, the big play. Oh, yeah. That we talked about. And that's the game that Pat Summerall and John Madden did when it was so rare for them to come to Buffalo. Exactly. It was like a 4 p.m. Sunday Fox game, and the defense won that game. Yeah, it was a 4 o'clock game, and you're right, Kurt Schultz had that big hit. That was one, oh. of, the, that was one of the bigger regular season games in Bill's history. Oh, agreed. Yeah. You know, yeah. anytime the Cowboys come to town, but then Jim was out, Todd yep. played you know, well enough to win. I Defense think it, played great. Was it Derek Holmes that had a really good yes, game too? Yes, yeah, Derek Holmes. That. I know we're talking about quarterback. Yeah, still. yeah. So, so it became pretty clear, pretty obvious around the building that Todd wasn't going to be the guy, right? Yeah, like, like, was, was that already? You know, a second round pick, and we're just, but, but who could have uh, he, foreseen? Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's what, go to you know what was about to unfold. Let's right? go to number four though before we go into the '98 season. This our is guy, your guy, our guy, Alex Van Pelt. Yep, you played, you played with, you worked with him directly. He, yeah. The best, uh, I love yeah, him. Good, good guy. Offense coordinator now. Been bouncing around the league as yeah, we see for with quite a while. Cleveland, actually, I just had an email exchange with him. He sort of helped me uh, make contact with the Browns for something that I'm, I'm doing. On you know, on not a your startup book company. Not no, no not the, the Thunder book. Snow of Buffalo. No, thanks. It's available on thanks. Amazon and possibly in the Bill store. Thunder <laughs> Snow of Buffalo. Okay, no, keep going. So yeah, no, no. Alex was um, Alex. Alex is just a real dude. You exactly right. Like just like if you if you were at a bar, honestly, you'd have no idea. That Alex Van Pelt was an NFL starting quarterback. You might think he was a star beer league softball player. <laughs> That's, I'm glad you said it and I didn't. <laughs> I think he would describe himself that yeah, way. He, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't shaped like an NFL quarterback. No, like in no way, shape, or form. And he had he I mean he had all the pit records. He broke all of Dan Marino's passing records. That's and crazy, it, isn't it? Like I, I just I was shocked the first time I saw him. I'm yeah. like. That dude looks like <laughs> yeah. you and I. Like, yeah. He's a little taller. He's like about six two, maybe. Sure, but just the most regular, normal, yep. like salt of the earth. Just yeah. like a really good dude. He was, yeah. He still came, is, he obviously. Came back to be a coach uh, later in the years. I what, what coaching staff was it? I think forget. It might have been either Duran or or uh, or Chan Gailey, but he was the quarterbacks coach, and I think he might have eventually been the offense coordinator. And Nate Hackett was on that staff too, but. I won. Uh, I came in second place for an NCAA tournament pool. I wonder if they can still do that. Or... Probably. Yeah. He beat you, right? Uh, Alex Van Pelt. Well, I, don't, I forget. I came. What's in the story you told me about that? Didn't he have? Did he have to give you cash? Or... He gave me cash. Uh, it was like three hundred dollars. Like woohoo! I never carry that kind of cash around. And I came home and I had a leak in the plumbing in the basement, right. and I had a guy come 
hey, uh, fix this, yeah, this pipe, this pipe. Uh, there's only there'll be three hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah, oh, easy right. come, easy go. But that was that was Alex Van Pelt that ran the pool. Like, see that right there? Yes, he ran an off season yeah. pool. Like, yes, that usually. We've seen times where it was done by a scouting intern. Yes. Hey, buddy, you're no, going to run was, the office. Was, he was, ran it. Like, yeah. he tracked it I can on totally an Excel see spreadsheet too. and yeah. everything, right? He he would be in my top three of want to have a beer with on this list. Oh, I like that. You know, yeah, uh, sure. w- w- would you agree with that? Uh, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jim obviously is Jim. Yeah, they got Fitz, and, Fitz hanging out there. Yeah, later, yeah. But, so but, so yeah, he, but, he'd yeah. be in my top three. Yep. And, and he's probably the one you'd be most likely to find at a bar randomly yeah. over time. Yep. All right, so let's get into 1998 and the entire drama that surrounds our next two uh, contestants. This, th- this is just, I mean, okay, who, let, did, who did you just talk to about it? We had on, oh, it was um, Matt Perino. Yes, right? about about the Doug and Rob. And, and it lives forever. It does. And it, could you, like going into that season, ever have imagined like what was so, about to unfold so it's let's crazy. let's walk it back for a second 1998 uh wade phillips is named the head coach uh-huh. and the bills go out and trade for rob johnson yeah based on one excellent game he had with jacksonville right correct but he had been a first round pick too yep yep game of i always remember five year 25 million dollar contract big do you remember your impressions of him do you remember what it felt like in the building when they signed him because he was now because they got rid of todd collins he only started one year yeah. Todd was out. Yeah. Like, do you remember what? Yeah. I, I, we knew he was from California, but we didn't realize until we met him that he would. He was such, California. Such personified yes. California. He was like, if, if California, Southern California, if Southern California was a person, <laughs> it's Rob Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and I don't mean that in a disparaging way whatsoever. I always found him very pleasant. Sure. Uh, you know, a, a good, a good guy, yep. but just. Dude, you know, oh. everything was Southern California. Like, it was a, almost like he was a caricature. He would wear flip-flops in the building in, like, November. Yes. Isn't there a story that you told me about a check yeah. that he had left? Uh, I think people would lo- want to hear this. I was telling I was telling Jim Overdorf one day that I was I was going to go to training camp. I, I worked mostly at One Bill's Drive, and it was great to get all my work done. But I, I would go to camp occasionally, and I told Jim, yeah, I'm going to go tomorrow. He's like, ah, wait a minute. Uh, okay, sounds good. I, I'm going to give you a check to give to Rob Johnson. Um, I remember he said, do you want it now? I'm like, no, I don't want to take it home, but I'll pop in in the morning and you can give it to me then. So, um, for some reason, I, yeah, he's like, it's a lot of money. Look at a million but net. Okay. You net. know, so it must've been 1.6 or okay. something. It was, was, wow. Okay. Signing and, bonus. Uh, it was like part two or three of a signing bonus. I okay. think. Yeah. Like the, it, they got paid in installments. Um, and so I I didn't know whether Rob knew I was coming with the check or not, but I went to camp and I, I was, you know, hanging on to it and went in the locker room and like, hey, Rob, uh, I, was, I was told to give you this. He's <laughs> like, and, you know, he, he looks like, oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. That was it. Million dollar like, check. Yeah. Just just <laughs> as nonchalant as if you gave him 20 bucks. Uh, right. Yeah. It just it struck me. Yeah, I don't you know what were he was probably supposed to do. You were probably more excited for Alex Van Pelt's three hundred dollars than he was to get the check <laughs> well, for a million. I got that money. Yeah, well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> right. it, it, that that's three hundred right. gained more of a reaction from you than the million dollar check. Literally that's... a million dollar check that you gave to to Rob Johnson. I mean, yeah. He knew it was coming. Exactly. But still, like, like in his head, he's already banked it or something. I don't know. But still, like the reality of holding that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, well, uh, clearly, clearly not. Yeah. So I think that that does a really quick but good job of summarizing like who he was personality wise and i think that that's where like we talked about how great jim and frank meshed it together Ooh. i think that's where <laughs> the some of the person, child that's maybe, maybe maybe where we get to the opposite of that with our number six uh yeah. flutie I, I will say to me w- regarding your experience on the coaching staff that year um 2000 yeah and and 2000. So yep. we're, we're kind of talking about all these. We're years getting now, there, right? Yep. Yeah. This, we're we're in that we're in that time where they're yep. they're going back and forth. Yep. But I remember you were traveling with the team at that point because um, you were on the coaching staff. I was not yet traveling with the team, as I would be five years later as director of football administration. But I think it was like the high water mark, maybe for your career and and ha- what it meant for the team success when he had a. Uh, um, like a last second Kansas City. Uh, drive in Kansas City yeah. and and whatever that made the record seven and four something seven like that. and four. So yeah. this was this was the year this was the year after the Music City Miracle. Mm-hmm. You know he famously came in on the last 
it during the last mop up game against the Colts. Mm-hmm. Killed it. Uh, was was placed in the Music City Miracle game, which you know we can talk about for days and days and days as to whose decision that was and whether it was the right decision or not. The next year, it was really ugly. He was going to start the se- he started the season. He played the the revenge game against Tennessee, the Sunday night ESPN game. Rob Johnson did. Rob Johnson started that game. Started it. Doug Flutie was hurt. Okay, so Rob was the starter. And Alex Van Pelt was the backup. Rob got hurt in that game. Oh, I was going to say. And then Alex Van, Van Pelt came it. in and probably had the biggest throw of his career. He hit a, little, a quick slant over the middle. Eric Molds. Yeah. Molds broke it like forty yards. We we kicked the field goal to go up three. And ironically, there was like thirty seconds left, and we had to kick off to Tennessee. And the panic on the sideline was something that I had never seen before. It was like this group huddle of about seven people deciding whether we were going to squib, whether we were going to bloop, whether we were going to kick deep. Steve Christie couldn't get the ball out of the end zone because you know, he kicked from the thirty back then, not the thirty-five. And it was like sheer, it was sheer panic about what we were going to do to cover that kick. And they they rec- they returned it almost to midfield, which. Yeah. Anyways, so Rob started that game, got hurt. Alex came in. Uh, Rob came back, started the next few games, then got hurt again. Doug took over basically for the rest, for the middle of the way through the season. Rob came back for that Kansas City game. They kind of were in – basically anytime Rob was healthy, Wade played Rob. Okay. Even though everybody in the locker room wanted Doug. Hmm. And it was clear to me that Doug was the better option. And the, the better chance to win every game for whatever reason. But Rob's best game was probably that Kansas City road game where he made a, a scramble on like third and fourteen, and he kind of flew over the pylon. And there's yeah. a picture of him, you know, scoring. And everybody kind of thought that that was Rob Johnson's coming out party. And here we go. And then it all fell apart the next week in Tampa. And uh, my buddy Joe in New York City, Buffalo Wins on Twitter, has as his uh, avatar the picture of Rob Johnson lying flat on his stomach. You, I'm sure you've seen that picture. He looks dead. He got run over by Warren Sapp, and I think it was like a fumble or a pick six, and he's lying flat on his stomach in t- in the field in Tampa. And I can see it. We it were never, should, yeah. we were never the same again. <laughs> uh. We were never the same again. So let's let's talk about Doug. Do you remember? Do you remember hearing he was coming in? Do you remember? He was AJ Smith's guy. I remember AJ Smith was pushing really hard to bring Doug Flutie in, which is kind of odd considering that you were also traded for and signed what was supposed to be a franchise quarterback in Rob. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the theory behind AJ Smith signing Doug Flutie, uh, and it, it wouldn't normally, someone in player personnel wouldn't normally think this way. So I was always skeptical of it, but the team signed him, had AJ sign him because it would help us uh, get more Canadian fans. <laughs> Because he just came from the that, CFL. Seriously? Oh, well, and this was the, this, this was, was fan the, speculation. And this not was inside the, the building, but we we never thought he if if Flutie, you know, was that good still. Um, you know, when when was when was his Boston College? Uh, oh, well, that was eighty four. Eighty four. Yeah, so this yeah. and then he's been in the USL CFL for and, years. Like that's this is really fourteen years okay, later. Let's let's unpack this for a second though. Nineteen ninety eight. Had we sold the suites yet? No. The lease no, negotiations were no. were right then. Yeah, there, there, and there he could have been something to this. He was playing. He he played for the Argos, and he also Calgary was his. And he won championships. Oh my goodness! Really? You think that's really right? I'm I'm mm-hmm. not saying you. Think, I don't know, but boy, that is that is. Now that I think about it, that is coincidental. That 1998 <laughs> was the big business backs the Bills. Yeah, new stadium talk, luxury suites uh, from the every little bit helps department. Does this increase and like, our Canadian and, support and a little you, more? Because he was beloved in Canada. Sure, like, he he won championships up many there. great cups right and you you have mentioned on the program before that other personnel decisions later on including some high profile receivers mm-hmm. in the 2009 season might have been based upon ticket yes. sales and marketing well yeah and those were, same people were there in 1998 they were interesting they just didn't, they didn't quite have that influence yet right but they might have been a little voice out here that could say because it's an odd signing they, they wouldn't have at that point they wouldn't have had any direct say over Correct. telling AJ Smith that we should do this for this. But were they going to leverage that? I'm sure. But it's an interesting signing to go out, trade a first round pick, sign a quarterback to a five year, twenty five million dollar deal, and bring in this thirteen year veteran who's got name recognition and cachet. And you were almost inviting a, con- a quarterback controversy because he was going to be popular and he's spunky and he's yeah. all these things. And it felt like to me. You were bringing in a Trojan horse 
right off the bat. And I, I think some of that is in retrospect for, for how much Flutie did because I, I think there was this, this kind of mindset like, wait a minute, you know, the guy played a little bit in the NFL yeah. with the Patriots and the Bears. He didn't have much success at all. He's been kind of exiled now. Like, if he was as good, why didn't anyone else try to bring him right. from me right. in? I, but, and we wouldn't have known until, get ahead of ourselves here, but in, in week, what well, one, right? When? In, in 98. No, no, no. Well, Rob played, Rob started week one, San Diego and, lost. But he got hurt, but Flutie came in for a little bit and, and like right. gave us a chance. Right, yep. Right, he played like, oh, wait a minute, this guy can play yep. still. Like, but we started didn't know. Started season 0-3. Yeah. Rob, and then just, and then they beat San Francisco. And then they beat with the, Rob Johnson. With Rob Johnson, and yeah. then they played the Colts in Indy. Rob got hurt. Doug came in, won, and then the next week's the famous Jacksonville game. Yeah, and the bootleg on uh, the last play of the game against a five and five and Jacksonville. Team. And I remember, I rem I'll never forget it. I, I was standing <laughs> on the fire escape. Uh, I think you were there too, I was, right? I was there for that uh, near the red zone where those are. By the way, those are great seats. Nobody could ever get them today. There's always a security guard there, but that's a great place to watch a game. The it fire is. escape stairs. What's it called? It's the M and T Club now. I think it's, it's not okay, the red yeah. zone anymore. Those are. That's a great place to watch a it game. Is. I'll never forget. After that game was over, they played "I'm a Believer" by the Monkeys. <laughs> As everybody was walking off the field, and it was like, oh man, there's something here. I like, had family at that game. Like people were going nuts. Yeah, I had family come to that game from Connecticut, and uh, I was glad they were able to experience that. Yeah, boy, you just you just jarred in my head the timing of that, and to bring in, in in the words of your former boss, a novelty act, <laughs> like just very interesting that yeah. you would choose to sign Doug Flutie. It seemed kind of gimmicky. In, yeah, 19, you know? in 1998 of all times in the state of the franchise. I, I don't think anyone in our building really thought that Flutie had a reasonable chance of seeing the field except for injury, which I, I, I don't think they thought there was going to be a the quarterback battle. Right. Uh, but, and and but, that quarterback battle lasted uh, <laughs> three years. Oh, boy. And it was never resolved. No. And the two of them. I just didn't get along. You you saw that you witnessed. Yeah, they just didn't get along, and that's that's okay. I think there's there's healthy professional conflict, but then there's also unhealthy professional conflict, and unfortunately, it split the locker room, and it split the coaching staff. Well, it's interesting too because with your experience in coaching, you see the amount of time that position groups spend together in those little rooms. Thankfully, I was never in a room with. Uh, uh, with Turk Schoenert, Rob Johnson, <laughs> Doug Flutie, and Alex Van Pelt. That had to be awkward. Boy, Van Pelt had to be the... Yeah, he was the perfect third. Yeah, exactly. Perfect third. Yeah. Like, the, everybody's friend. He he got along with both of them from what I from what I saw. Sure, like the, he's, the perfect, yeah. he's the perfect third. Yeah. You know, like a, like a good wingman to a bad marriage. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was a bad oh, marriage. Oh. Those two <laughs> just just did not... Oil and water. Yep. And, and they're competing for a job. I mean, obviously, there were things other than personality that would make those guys rivals. And, and I don't think, God love him, I don't think Coach Phillips did a good job. I don't think Wade handled it well at all. Like in the media, I just make a decision and go with it. Yeah, it, it makes you wonder, too. Fans wonder. They still do to this day. You know, ask Sean McDermott or, you know, the fans in the media, Did could they have possibly understand? Like, they're working so hard in that building. Uh, but does that mean they're – just so tone deaf to the beat, the the media and the fan uh, passion, right. uh, one way or another, about right. who should have been the guy. Well, and the like, thing is, is that normally, normally I would say, like today, if there's some controversy, as long as it doesn't seep into the locker room or into the building, kind of who cares? If the media and the fans all want to go crazy about something, but it doesn't affect <laughs> the team. Great. This affected the team. Like this, yeah. like there was fist fights in the locker room, and this affected on field performance. Like I'm just, I'm sitting here amazed. Could you even imagine? No, no, now no. Twitter. No. Oh my God. No. No. It, no. No. <laughs> no. I th I think honestly, I think it, it would have been resolved one way or another quicker. There's no way it could have gone three. This was a a full blown quarterback controversy for three seasons. Like yeah, three full seasons. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think, I don't think there's any way that it would last this long. Yeah, today it, it's it's funny because uh, when we had Matt Perino on, what a great interview that was, by the way, and it was well received. But when you brought up that Flutie Johnson, I, I could see the screen, and he was, he was just like. Tell me, tell me more about yeah. that. Yeah, like it's when you still, started talking it's still about alive. It, yeah. like people still, still are interested. Yeah. Just, I think just because 
it has to be one of the more contentious quarterback debates in NFL history. Yeah, I mean, easily. And, and, the, and the whole the playoff game and the Music City Miracle. And ironically, I had mentioned this to my, to my friend Pat the other day, going through this list, the player closest to winning a playoff game in between Jim Kelly, Frank Reich, and Josh Allen was Rob Johnson. Rob Johnson walked off the field yeah, yeah. with a lead yeah. with, what, 13 seconds left? Yeah. However many seconds left before the music. He was, of all these quarterbacks, he was the closest one to winning a playoff game. Yeah, um, true. I mean, Flutie was real close in Miami, and we had Jerry Ostrowski on the program who yep. was so insulted when I told him that. Uh, in Miami, yeah, the Trace Armstrong they had the picture. Big picture of Trace Armstrong. And he was like, "Oh, he was cherry picking. He only played twelve plays or whatever. Yeah. He was fresh." And they were both close to uh, winning, but Rob walked off the field with with this, this you know, is true. with the lead. This is true. And and imagine if they win that game, and then you go on the next. And and we were we were one of the best teams. We we might have been. Yeah, and you're not talking about the the two thousand one Bills who you knew were a super rebuild, and two thousand ten was just going to be a total rebuild. They drafted third. Uh, you're talking about a team that still had Bruce Smith, Thurman Thomas, Andre mm -hmm. Reed, mm -hmm. uh, core players from the Super Bowl years in their twilight years, albeit. But they're, they're still they were good. It was, was a lot it, of it built in Eric Washington, Moulds, right? Ted Washington, yep. Pat Williams, uh, yep. uh, Antoine Winfield. There was a ton of talent on those teams. Yeah, that's a peerless price. A lot. All right, let's move on, and then we're gonna we're gonna go into the drought era here. How are we doing here? Yeah, uh, we got to, yeah, about ten more minutes. Okay, and then we'll, we'll definitely do a part two. We're okay. Do a part two here, definitely. We're not going to get through the myriad of quarterback <laughs> options. That's right, still right. we're only like a third third of the way through the guys. Now, some of these guys were only there for a cup of coffee, but we're gonna we're gonna move on to uh, Drew Bledsoe, two thousand two. I had departed the organization by then, and my fandom had uh, turned from love to not love. Uh, maybe <laughs> yeah, tell me gentle. tell me tell me about Drew Bledsoe coming in here because that was a big deal. You it was. It really big deal like in a way that one final fluty story just before we do that just put that's on the shelf because you're right i'm gonna i have a lot of memories about that but i i i never i hardly ever ever despite friends and family that sometimes ask hey could you get this signed could you get that signed but for some reason the season was over it must have been 2000 i think and uh and i had a, a sports illustrated a fluty from boston college Okay. Was it either the Boston College one or the Bills one. And I brought it in. I don't know what made me think this. I didn't have any inside knowledge, but I brought it in one day and uh, I asked Doug to sign it. And he's like, sure. He goes, what do you want me to say? Um, I just said, I don't know. It was nice working with you. And he looked at me like... <laughs> That's past tense. Yeah. What are you? What are you talking about? What a what a terrible idea! <laughs> I know. I, as, I meant it's good to work with you or something, but however I phrased it was yeah. was as yeah. if yeah. it's been nice working with you, and as he, if that was. And he looked at me like he took it. Um, now he's in the media. Doug's a smart guy. And you I'm like ah, and I, you, I wish I had that were, over. And you were in you were in a <laughs> yeah. position at that point where you certainly weren't you weren't a decision maker, but you right. might have known something absolutely, and he knew that. And it, I, it, he did get cut, but I, I just, I just, I, oops, I wish I had that one back. I, I have it somewhere. I wish you would have, <laughs> I wish you would have come to me about 10 minutes earlier and said that to me before I got let go. That would have softened the blow a little bit if you would have. Anyway, wow. Sorry. Wow. That's a, that's a great, that's yeah. a great story. Did he, he, he signed it though? He did. Yeah. yeah. And he said exactly that. I think I have it over there. It was somewhere. nice working I, with you. Uh, it's been great working with you. Or it is great. Work. It, I don't know. We're gonna we're, for, for part two. We're gonna yeah. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna clarify there. That's yep. that's funny. <laughs> I, there's a little foreshadowing there because he, then he did get released. Yeah, and he still he played well in um, uh, San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah. I bet I remember being so into that game in 2001. Well, you'd have been happy to hear how upset Tom Donahoe was as how well he was playing in San Diego. Yeah, he had that like quarterback scramble right up the middle. Well, he had 400 yards I, passing or I, something. I, yeah, that that was. The yeah. first time in my life that I was actively really rooting against the Bills, and I was so into that game after being let go. We played each other, or it was oh, San Diego and Buffalo. We played, we played two thousand one. Yeah, yeah. Steve Christie was kicking for San Diego. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> it was beautiful. I, I was so happy. I was so. Yeah. It's so weird to think about now. I was. I was hate watching that game. AJ Smith was John Butler was. Out oh there. yeah, everybody yeah, was there. They, they, they were all. They were all there, the and Bills I was West. so. 
I was so invested in that game. I remember I watched it at a Buffalo Wild Wings on Elmwood, and I was so in- – I, I must have looked like a maniac. Like, I – people probably couldn't figure out what the hell is this guy cheering so hard for the San Diego Chargers for against the Bills. They couldn't have. If I would have told them the story, nobody would have believed they me. They, there's no way they could have. Yeah, known. yeah, like, yeah. like, hey, you remember me? I was on the sideline last year for that team, and now I'm at a Wild Wings <laughs> cheering. Re- yeah, yeah, not great. Yeah. So you know what? We're gonna leave it here. Okay, uh, it's been 40 minutes. Uh, so we're gonna leave it at the drought. I will promise that the Drew Bledsoe. I, I've got a couple interesting things that, that I may have shared before. I don't know, but if not, it was a long time. So ago. I'm gonna give time. everybody yeah. a, a quick preview. We have got Drew Bledsoe. We have JP Lossman. We have Kelly Holcomb. We have Trent Edwards. We have the Fitz. We have a little bit of Brian Brom. We have <laughs> EJ e. Manuel. Wow, that's <laughs> EJ Manuel. Thad Lewis. Jeff Tool, Kyle oh, Orton, who's tall, he's tall. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, and then the immortal Matt Castle era of Bills football. Before we get to the uh, time when Don gets let go, oh, and you, hold on, Matt Castle. Yep. Yeah. One game. I was gonna tease. I was gonna tease people, even though we weren't live about that's that's a trivia question. Yeah, that's a great one. I, I want to look that up. I want to watch that play. I, I I do remember that that he lined up at quarterback and he was listed as the starting quarterback because they were in the Wildcat. That's it. I yeah. can't quite figure out why Matt Castle was the Wildcat running back on that play. It, typically, it's a running back, right? In the, well, I, but you know that's that that was the genius <laughs> of the 2015 Bills that you'd start Matt Castle. Uh, that was the first play. Was that the first play of the Rex? Of the team yes. Rex Ryan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no. and that was that God. was not a well. The defense was great. But Come on. The, so, but, uh, so the first play of Rex Ryan's tenure with the Buffalo Bills had Matt Castle lined up in the Wildcat formation. Who was who was that against the Colts? I don't know. I think you we, would, we won the game. You I would know more than me. Percy Harvin had a, a good big game. lord. But I mean, talk big, about over win. talk about overthinking it. All oh, right. Oh, I mean, exactly. It's it's gimmicky. I have forgotten on. when you brought when I saw his name. I I could not remember this at all. But then I, I had to be reminded. Wow. That, yeah. Okay. Well, we're hopefully everybody uh, enjoyed this stroll down memory lane. I know. I know. I did. Hopefully, yeah. Don did too. I did. We're gonna we're gonna plunge into the drought in part two and i'm sure you have a lot more memories and stories and this is when your time as a director of football admin i'm sure there's some uh, good and bad memories coming up right around Osman holcomb there so yeah, yeah there's plenty plenty there to, to <laughs> chew on right <laughs> all right thanks for tuning in uh please like and subscribe and we'll uh, see everybody soon